the bat here with some news you can use. Got some interesting news. I've been collecting headlines the last few days uh, as to, to what has been going on out there. And typically there's several sources you can generally rely on. And when they all trend in the same direction, you can just well, pretty, pretty well be assured that that's in fact what's happening. Um, so let me read you the headlines for the last three days. Uh, the first one, housing market inventory is about to get better. In other words, more inventory on the market. Number two, three signs that American home buyers are cooling the housing market. And the third one is housing boom begins to fizzle. Weekly mortgage demand falls. These all indicate, um, you know, a trend that we've predicted here for the last couple of months that we probably have already peaked and now we're starting to go down, at least flatten off. Uh, prices are not continuing to increase at the same rate. In some areas, they'll increase slightly, but in a lot of areas, frankly, they're starting to drop down or they're at least flattening out. Days on market, um, you know, are lengthening. Sellers are having to wait longer to get offers. They're not getting multiple offers like they used to. They're getting less offers uh, and um, more offers at or below the asking price. So these are all good things for the market. Um, but I'm gonna read you something that I think is as important, if not more so than any of that news. And it was news that came out at 5.53 this afternoon, East Coast time. And this was regarding a settlement that the Department of Justice had with the National Association of Realtors. I've talked about this, in fact, I talked about this, I think on Tuesday's call, the uh, National Association of Realtors has been charged under the Sherman Act antitrust violation um, by the federal government. And this happened during the Trump administration and they had crafted a settlement with the National Association of Realtors. And it primarily, in, in my understanding, focused around the fact that MLSs have been um, the purview of just the National Association of Realtors um, you know, parties. And so essentially what they've done is they've created an antitrust issue out there. They've held this information in private. Uh, some, some places like uh, PropStream have the ability to gather the information directly. They have a contract with the NAR. But the overall, the overreaching thing was that the Department of Justice, uh, the federal government's Department of Justice, which enforces the antitrust violation things, um, you know, was claiming that they are keeping this information secret and they're not making it available to everybody out there. So uh, the NAR basically said, yes, uh, you know, we agree to kind of open this thing up. Today, on the verge of getting this settlement signed, the Justice Department walked away, or they called it walked back their settlement with the National Association with Realtors. And one of the reasons is they didn't think it went far enough to crimping. Now, for those of you who are real estate agents, you guys already know this thing, but to, to crimping the MLS issues, you know, canning them up and making them more available to the public. Um, and it turned out there are a number of other things that were going on here. Some of these I was not really aware of. Um, one of the things that they have now said that they won't sign off on until these things get fixed uh, because they are restraining free trade is they want to prohibit the National Association of Realtors affiliated the MLS systems from disclosing to prospective buyers the amount of commissions that the buyer broker will earn. So right now, um, you know, the, the agents and the brokers themselves can look behind the curtain and find out how much commission is being paid uh, by a particular seller or the listing agent uh, on behalf of the seller uh, to the, the buyer's agent and that kind of thing. The only people who can't get that information, unfortunately, is the buyers themselves. Justice Department said, no, no, we're not gonna do that anymore. Now there has to be full transparency. The buyers have to know how much money you're making. Um, number two, they're allowing buyer brokers to misrepresent. This is, once again, these are the charges against the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, that they're allowing the buyer brokers to misrepresent to buyers that a buyer's broker services are free. So this has happened, this has been one of my big complaints for years. 
you know, people will say, uh, I'm just going to use a buyer's agent to find me a house because A, they have access to the MLS and B, it doesn't cost me anything. That's not true. Um, there is there is commission that goes from the listing agent or actually from the seller of the house to the buyer's agent. And the government's position, which I agree with, is that is illegal. Um, at a minimum, it should be disclosed. And right now, they have up to now, they've been allowed to, to claim that there is no cost to the buyer. It's absolutely not true. Because if there's a 6% commission, it might get split three and three or two and four or two and a half and three and a half or something like that. But there is a direct cost. So the government's saying no more of that either. Number three, um, they said that the NAR is enabling broker buyers to filter MLS listings based on the le le level of commission that is being offered and to exclude homes listed on the MLS have low commissions. So in other words, I, and I wasn't even aware of this, but if you're in one of these big MLS systems, you can actually sort the list to see where the biggest commission you can earn is. Rather than showing your buyers or selling the houses that might be the best uh, house for that person or that customer, that buyer, they're, they're allowed to screen it on to whatever they're gonna make the most. And then they don't have to disclose that they've used that as their criteria. No place in there does it say, I'm recommending this house because this is the one I make the most commission on. In every other piece of the business economy out there, this would be strictly illegal. Bravo to the government for stepping up and saying, you know, and I don't typically agree with the Biden administration on this stuff, but somebody in the Department of Justice is on point on this stuff and they're taking these guys to task. So good to them. And then the last thing, um, they, you know, the NAR has limited access to lock boxes that provide licensed broker with physical address access to a house that's for sale and only brokers who are a member of the affiliated MLS. So the government is once again saying you cannot keep any potential buyer out of that house. You're allowed to put some rules on it to make sure that the house remains safe but you've got to develop a system so that as us as investors could go in and look at a house that has somebody's lockbox on it. If a client wants to list it with an MLS or National Association of Realtors, basically every large real estate company is a member of NAR and they follow those rules. So these four things, in addition to the fact that the National Association of Realtors has kept the multiple listing services to themselves and not made them publicly available, I think are gonna be awesome changes. These things are gonna be great and they're gonna really open up our business. Now, um, another piece of information came out several days ago is the NAR has come out and stated that the real estate investor community is de minimis as far as they're concerned. In other words, we are you know, a pimple on the backside of a flea. They don't care, we're not important. We make up too small of a percentage of the market I believe that is incorrect factually, and they're going to be challenged by some other groups, including, I think, a couple of government watchdog groups for making those statements, because the, the idea behind nationally making that statement was to make buyers, I mean, sellers of houses look at investors as kind of like a lower second tier type provider. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing that I always tell our people, and I've told sellers for years, I said, listen, you can go list the house, but make sure that you tell your broker, your agent, that if they don't sell it, they'll buy it from you. So if you're unable to sell it, Mr. Agent, you need to buy it from me. Because over here, Jeff and his investor friends, they're going to buy it from me. We don't have to worry about them selling it. They're just going to flat buy it. And that is the biggest argument I think you guys can use out there. And so I would use that. And once again, you know, bravo to the Department of Justice for going after finally the National Association of Real Estate Agents uh, or National Association of Realtors on these issues. I think these are definite antitrust violations. And like I said, if this was any other industry or any other business, uh, we would have already had our head handed to us on a platter. So, um, you know, keep keep your uh, your eyes and ears open for future developments on that. But um, this is basically unheard of where you get to the signing of a, a settlement in an antitrust case and the government walks back 
their settlement decides we're not settling because there are too many other things there on the table. So, um, you know, that's a, a big victory for us, whether the market goes up or down, that this these types of things, once corrected, will add long-term stability and will bolster our uh, presence, our, by ours, I mean, investors' presence, um, you know, out there in the, in the marketplace. So I think that's really going to help.